Comedy Hollywood. It's Acme Saturday Night. Starring Curtis Freisel, Leif Gantford, Nick Greco, Dan Kane. Bill Kessler, Joseph Limbaugh, Jen Parker. Brett Sheridan, Jake West, and Julie Wintner. Musical guest. The Young Romans. And your host tonight, Reginald Bell Johnson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Reginald Bell Johnson. time here this evening at Hollywood Saturday Night Live. Hello! And I want to thank Reggie Bell Johnson. Oh, well, <laughs> hello, high-powered television executives. <laughs> Hosting a weekly sketch show, eh? Pathetic. You know why we're here. Look, <laughs> I told you guys already, I got out of that comedy game a long time ago. Face the facts, Reggie. You've played a cop in more successful films and television than anyone else in history. Die hard! <laughs> Turner and Hooch, Ghostbusters, Family Matters, Die Hard 2, Die Harder. You were born to play a cop, Reggie. Let us pitch you one more show. Look, it's very tempting, but I can't. I'm a regular actor now. I live a quiet, simple life with my two dogs and a guinea pig. I just want to host this comedy show and go home. Oh. All right, have it your way. But if you don't, your two dogs and guinea pig are dead. Say what? It's a new pilot for Fox called Your Two Dogs and Guinea Pig Are Dead. <laughs> it's about a cop who's always having to save his pets from dangerous and hilarious situations week after week. It's a comedy. It's a comedy. <laughs> Look, that sounds brilliant. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's been too long. I, I can't go back to that. I can't. Fine. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna have to murder you in your sleep. Excuse me? It's a new pilot for Fox. <laughs> we're gonna have to murder you in your sleep. It's about a cop who's confined to his bed because of narcolepsy and is always having to save himself from dangerous and hilarious situations. <laughs> it's a drama. It's a drama. <laughs> look, stop doing that. Now, look, look, look. These ideas you're pitching to me are some of the best goddamn ideas I've ever heard in a long time. But I gotta say no, no. Damn it, Reggie. This is who you are. How long has it been since you felt the cold, hard grip of a cold, hard rubber prop gun in your hand? Long time. Too long. But no, I can't do it. I can't do it unless... We're listening. How about this? It's a show about a guy who was a cop, made a lot of cops, but instead he took some time to host a comedy sketch show where he gets rudely interrupted by two knucklehead executives. <laughs> he just wants to finish the opening of the show and leave him alone, so he shoots them in the face. It's called, get the hell off my stage before I shoot you in the face. It's a drama, horror, sci-fi, western, fantasy, silent comedy show. Shoot you in the face. <laughs> I, I like it. It's all yeah. right. Good? Good. All right. <laughs> we have a great show tonight. The Young Romans are here. Be good.
you guys for coming in a half hour early. All right, we got the interview tomorrow, so I'm gonna be ready. Yeah, it was no problem. I just, uh, you know, set the alarm ahead. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? Traffic is surprisingly light when you come in a half hour early. Yeah, it was yeah, really nice. Was. It was really nice. It really was. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so about this interview. Okay. Right. Mandy, I need you to take the point. Okay. Okay. Made it. I made it. <laughs> Thank God. I'm here. No one panic. It's fine. Oh, God. Okay, let's get started, guys. Let's get started. Let's Lou, get started. Lou, why are you covered in sweat and mud? Because I, I had to get here half an hour early, right? It was crazy. Oh my water. God, Lou, was that what? Blood? Oh my God, Lou. It's not mine. It's okay. It's not mine. Oh. It's not mine. It's all right. Whose blood is it? Hard to say, guys. In the early morning madness, a lot of things happen, right? It's hard to tell. All right, now, I have the interview, guys. I have some ideas about how we can... Jesus Christ! Oh, what the hell? Lou, why is there a human hand in your files? Uh, that's not... Technically, it's not a human hand. It's actually a vampire. It's, yeah. a, it's a vampire hand? You, yeah. you fought a vampire? Yeah, yeah. In the early hours of the morning, they still have power. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the light, the light is weak, you see. Half an hour early, made it. <laughs> you said it couldn't be done, God! Ha <laughs> ha! Who's laughing now? Lou! Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. Woo! Lou, maybe you should go home and get cleaned up. Maybe talk to the police. Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure the police aren't open this early. So, <laughs> let's try. Yeah. Let's try, okay. but. Pretty sure they're 24 7. Yeah, I agree to disagree, agree to disagree there, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change anyway, because I do got a spare shirt in my office, so that's gonna be fine. What? Oh my God. When did you get a tattoo? Oh, uh, what? Oh, yeah. Uh, I went through a lot of things to get here. Rites of passage, becoming a man. Is, it, is that a prison tattoo? Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> All right, so you. you... You fought a vampire. Killed a vampire. Killed a vampire. Check. Then joined a, a, a prison gang. Check. And then got a prison tattoo, all because you had to be here a half hour early. Well, blame this guy over here for making us come in early, right? It's not my fault. Right? Half blame hour. Gary. Do you, do you guys smell cinnamon? Yeah, I do. That's weird. What? Yeah, it's probably uh, it's probably because I waited hip deep in cinnamon to get here. Why? <laughs> half an hour early. Cinnamon! The cinnamon factory is in Agora Hills! Yeah, Why well, that's where, the, the there? that's where the vampires were, bro! Why didn't you just take a lip in? Because I don't back down from a challenge. Oh, uh, you don't. Know, yeah, I don't back down! You don't back down from a challenge! Okay, let's try to get back to the meeting. What yeah. were you saying? Wait a second, take... is it my imagination or was your skin darker yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I kind of got distracted by the whole vampire cinnamon thing, but. Yeah, are, aren't you Italian? Uh. Yeah, yeah, I guess, jeez, I must have, must have lost a lot of pigment getting over here half an hour early. How do you lose? That's pigment. How do you lose pigment? Well, it's because, if you must know, Paisan, it's because there was a bleach fight. Yeah. Oh, my God, Maroon, it got all over me. Wait, ah, you, you, you got, what's the matter? Okay, you got in a bleach fight because you had to be here oh, half an hour early. Yeah, 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 okay, well, uh, yeah, exactly, I did. Goddamn vampire. Wait, hold on. Vampires attacked you with bleach. Yeah, yeah. They don't just use fangs, Gary. How did you not get bleach on your clothes? Obviously, Belladonna, because we were naked. All right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Can we please get back to business? Okay. Fine, yes. Yeah, please, let's get to it. All right. Mandy, so I need you to take the point. point please. Let's do it. Lou. Yeah. I need you to lay the ground. Okay? Lay the ground. So I need you to be here five minutes oh, early. Oh, we're smart and tobacco! No! Whoa! So I'm stuck here at Starbucks. <laughs> Which Starbucks? Oh, the one in Hollywood, right next to the other Starbucks. But I'm bummed. 
Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I missed that. There's this guy here. Yeah, yeah, a uh, movie later? Oh, oh, well, I'm free and Laura's free. <laughs> that could work. No, we already saw Tree of Life. Mm-hmm. And honestly, they should have called it the Tree of Barta Death. But I'm bum. <laughs> uh, hold, hold on a second. Excuse me, did you uh, just do a rim shot at me? Yeah, you. You, 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 you. I'm talking to you. Yes. Could you stop listening to my conversation? Please, thank you. You got a newspaper there. Why don't you try reading that? Yeah, yeah, okay. There you go, read, read your paper. That's a good boy, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Oh, I also want to thank you, for, uh, you and Angie for bringing me the wine from your trip. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday Laura said to me, I think you have a glass of wine every night. And I said to her, I don't have a glass of wine every night, I have three glasses of wine every night. <laughs> but I'm done. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, excuse me, Winston. I need you to stop doing that right now. I'm trying to have a intelligent conversation here and you're making me very self-conscious. So please stop saying that, okay? Please, please. All right, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm back. I'll explain later, I don't know. Oh, that's so kind of you to ask. Yeah, my dad is, is fine, yeah. It sounds scary, but prostate cancer is a very manageable disease. But I'm fine. All right, damn it. <laughs> prostate cancer is a manageable disease and you said ba da bum bum That's not a joke. Seriously? That's a very, very serious thing. Now, I could somewhat understand you doing the ba da bum thing in previous statements I made, but that's not, come on, come on, give me a break here. Do you know the phrase ba da bum Please, I want you to promise me that you won't do that anymore. Promise me. Promise me. You got that? All right. All right. You will not utter those words aloud anymore, right? Okay. Yeah. I forgot to tell you that Marty called. He and his wife are having twins. <laughs> I, I saw that. I saw that. I saw you. You just mouthed ba-da-bum, ba-da-bum. Yes, you fulfilled the letter, but you did not fulfill the spirit of your promise to me. <laughs> now, you're not going to do that anymore. No face actions at all, okay? This whole thing is done. Do you promise me? It's all done. It's over with. No more anything. No more using your face to, in any way possible, okay? Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, this guy keeps making his ramshot noises. Right. Yeah, I think I took care of it. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, well, he, you know, he won't, he won't, he won't do that by the book thing, using his face. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, that sounds like a plan. Look, you just got, you guys just go grab the tickets and we'll buy the popcorn after I mortgage my house. <laughs> All right, look, I gotta go. I gotta kill somebody. But I'm done! chemistry teacher. Hey. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. You too. You too. Wow. It's, uh, <laughs> too bad my uh, brother Greg isn't here. He'd like to meet you too. Yeah, he's my uh, twin brother. Oh. The twin that works here too. I think he made cookies for your first day. What? I'm going to go check in the hall and see what's going on when he's not here yet. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> that is so nice. He has a twin who teaches here, huh? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> hey, it's me, Greg. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm late. Uh, well, wait a second. Where's my uh, actual twin, twin brother, Jim? The twins, actual twins, 
They're never in the room at the very same time, but they're twins, real actual twins, real legitimate twins. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where Jim is, your, your actual twin brother. I mean, he was just here. But then he took off. You know, huh. we, why don't we just start without him? Hey, you know, I'd feel awful if we started out without Jim, my actual twin brother. Yeah, you know, he wouldn't start without me. So it'd be best if we just wait for him. Um, where are my cookies? What? Your your brother said he had cookies for me. My my actual twin brother told you that? Yeah. Oh, the cookies! Yeah. I I bet I left them in the hall. I'll be oh. right. Can you believe this guy? <laughs> it reminds me of when the two of them, they ran the three-legged race together at the school picnic. Oh, yeah. It was so weird, because only Greg won. Yeah. What? You, you, you guys know he's not the twin, right? That it's the same exact person, right? You know that? Oh, no. You, I see what's going on. Yeah. I had, the, I had the same problem when I first met Jim and Greg. See, you, you probably don't understand how twins work. See. They look exactly the same, but they're two different people. Two different people. Yeah. <laughs> I know how twins work. I'm just saying <laughs> they are wearing the exact same thing. Yeah, but Greg has glasses. Oh, man. Huh. It's me, Jim. I'm back. Let's start this meeting. Where's your brother with my cookies? Well, yeah, Greg, where's the cook? <laughs> he was right behind me with the, he uh -huh. was, he had cookies. Yeah. <gasps> what? Uh, this is crazy. Our paths never seem to, what? it's always <laughs> kind of mixed up. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> oh, man, drove my mom crazy. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. He is real, though. Yeah. Real too, bro. I think he had to I go to the bathroom because oh. he looked like it. Yeah. So I'll just go. Check the bathroom, I'll yeah, get Greg in the totally. bathroom. So. Or, you know what? You stay here with them, I'm gonna go find them. Well, you can't! Why not? Because you're a woman, oh, <laughs> beautiful yeah. woman, and he's a man, and he's gonna be using the man's room, his penis, mm -hmm. and <laughs> so <laughs> I better go get him. You know what? Yeah. My brother's, I bet he'll like you, because uh -huh. you'll like him, because. I'm irresponsible. Don't I mean, oh, but he is yeah. smart and has glasses. I'll go get him. Right, wait. Oh my gosh, wait one second. <laughs> Just wanna do one. That was an accident. <laughs> go get your brother. <laughs> Um, Susan, 
Susan, seriously, why are you being like yeah. this? Because this is ridiculous. He's not a twin, okay? The the only thing that makes him different is I don't know what. What is wrong? What is God. Okay. The only thing that makes him different is he's wearing glasses. You're wearing glasses and you're not supposed to be the one wearing glasses right now. These are reading glasses. I don't even need these to look, I can see just fine. I Susan, Don't. here's the thing, all right? We try to keep an open workplace here, and we try to be non-discriminatory towards all sorts of people, even actual real twins, all right? So I think you need to apologize to both of them, both of these real twins, starting with this one. Greg, I'm I... Jim, the, Greg's got the glasses. We're Real twins, yes. it's a common yeah, mistake. Yeah, totally. Look, I am so sorry, but you can see how this Jim! is. Jim! Jim! <laughs> I just I just ran into your actual twin brother, Greg, in the hall. Oh, what do you know? He was really standing there, because he's your twin. <laughs> it's crazy how it's crazy how much they look alike, you know, yeah. except for the glasses. Glasses give it Cause, away. Because they're actual twins. And no one can ever take that away from them. <laughs> so hey, he gave me this cookie. Homemade cookie. You know, it's pretty great. Oh, you must be Susan. Nice. Fuck off. <laughs> Real legitimate twins. on that show 14 years ago. You have to move on, Reginald. You have to let Steve Urkel go. I want to, Doc. I really do. But I just can't. He gets in your brain and you can't get him out. Those horrible catchphrases over and over and over and over and over again. Did I do that? Did I do that? I want to try a new medication they've been having success with. The doctors at McLean used it to help Mario Lopez get rid of Screech. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to get that horrible little bastard out of my head. some sort of unfinished business. Maybe either he wants something from you or you want something from him. Do you have any idea what he might want from you? Maybe. Good, okay. Look at me like I'm him. Just talk to me as if I'm him. You are him. Yeah. You're Steve Urkel. Yes, I'm Steve Urkel. You want the cheese. Yeah. I have the cheese, Steve. You have cheese. Take the cheese, Steve. Take it. Mm -hmm. It's for you. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I did that. Wonderful. Reginald, I'm so proud of you. 
<laughs> you wanted the cheese? You said you did that? No, Steve. I did that, you nerdy motherfucker. Mr. Val Johnson, you have a visitor. Who is it? Uh, he didn't say his name. He just said that he was a friend in town visiting his wife, and he's not wearing any shoes. You be guy, motherfucker. Welcome to Young Roman.
Acme Comedy presents My Sensitive Brother. Where are my keys? Oh, here they are. Where are you going? Oh, I gotta go console my brother. He broke up with his girlfriend again. What happened? The usual. She's not real enough. She's too fake. She leaks air and he has to blow her up again. Oh, my brother is so sensitive. Stupid. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the George W. Bush Temporary Library and the 37th Republican Presidential Debate. With us tonight are the two frontrunners seeking the Republican ballot, Mitt Romney and Herman Cain. Welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> Let's start with Mr. Cain. Please outline your tax plan for America. Well, it's very simple. My tax plan is the 999 tax plan, which in a nutshell breaks down to a flat tax percentage across the board for everybody. 9% for business tax, 9% for personal tax, 9% for national tax. Look, 74% of Americans agree with me that his plan is short-sighted, increasing the deficit by $1.9 billion, and raising unemployment by an estimated 3.2%. Mr. Kane, would you care to respond? Too many numbers. <laughs> we need to simplify. Use one number. Nine. <laughs> what? Smaller government means fewer numbers. I like nine. <laughs> For? For everything. Get rid of all those other numbers. Get rid of them. Focus on nine. So just It's nine. a good looking number. It's got that little, you know, that little round thing at the top of it, then that little loop-de-loop -loop thing at the end, it's a very handsome number. <laughs> you adapted your entire economic plan because nine is a very handsome number. And should you be throwing terms around like handsome, good-looking, and loop-de-loop -loop with the sexual harassment charges you have against you? <laughs> See, here's the thing with that. I would never harass a single employee of mine. If I was going to harass somebody, it would be nine employees. All right, you seem very focused on that number. It's a great number. It works for so many different levels. For example, how many planets are there? Nine. What does that have to do with government? Or you need more examples? Fine. What's the best short game golf club? Nine iron. What's, who makes the best handbags and shoes? Nine West. <laughs> and who is the best industrial rock band of the 90s? Nine Inch Nails. Coincidence? I think not. It definitely is, yeah. Uh, maybe we should just move to questions from the audience. Uh, my first one, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Kane, uh, what kind of changes would you make in Washington? Well, um, first, instead of three branches of government, Nine. Okay, I, I don't understand how that's smaller government. Look, this is the core of the problem with Washington. Most politicians lose sight of the more important things and get stuck on one idea and just one idea alone. I am not stuck on one idea. I'm stuck on nine. <laughs> Which I would like to point out was the best animated film of 2009. How am I losing to this guy? I don't. Okay, uh, next question, ma'am. Yes, uh, I am very intrigued by this whole nine thing. Really? Yes, I am a cat person. Oh. <laughs> well, my cats love my plan. Because they have nine lives. No, because cats don't pay taxes. Yeah, cats never had to pay taxes. Okay, okay sir, do you have a question that does not involve number nine? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, great. Uh, Mr. Kane, if you become president, how would you fix the economy? Nine. That's not an answer! I, that's it, nine? Are you this dumb? <laughs> See, nine. Now that time, I wasn't saying the number nine. 
Instead, I was using the German word for nine, it means no. <laughs> Please, America, America, listen to me. You have let too many morons get too close to the White House. I say enough, enough already, stop this. Well, now it seems that Governor Romney could use a lesson in respect. Perhaps I should introduce him to my favorite nine, the one in my holster. Oh, no, hey, hey, no, 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 no. Mr. Kane, please refrain from using threats of violence, okay? Now, is there anything in your campaign that does not involve the number nine? Well, yes, of course. Which is? My soon-to-be pimped-out ride, Air Force One, which will be set at my new address, 1900 Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> teased you out. Uh, we got uh, jasmine pearls, uh, Japanese cherry, hey! mint, um, <laughs> organic gunpowder. Hey! Yeah, yeah, excuse me. Yes, can I help you? How much is this? <laughs> Should have a price tag on it. It does. It says two ninety five. Okay, then it's two ninety five. Two ninety five. Yes. Two ninety five. Yes. For this? Yes. You get this at Ralph's or. Sorry about that. No, no problem. Uh, we also have chamomile, vanilla berry truffle, hey! uh, apricot escape. Hey! Yes, yes, what? Yes, can I help you? How much is this? The, what does the price tag say? It's 950. Then it's 950. 950? Yes. For this? Yes. Pick one up at Ross for 50 cents. <laughs> it's a porcelain mug. No, you couldn't. <laughs> you could? The clearance aisle at last! It'd be 50 cents! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna help the customer currently in line. Is it okay? What's he getting? <laughs> don't worry about it. What are you getting? You don't have to. Don't. What are you getting? <laughs> Get a sandwich. Sandwich? What kind of sandwich? Turkey and brie panini. A panini sandwich? How much is that gonna cost you? $10. Ten dollars. Ten dollars for a panini sandwich? You didn't get one of those at Ralph's for fifty cents. No, you couldn't. You couldn't. Ralph's does not make paninis. They still have a panini sandwich. Is fifty cents. No, they don't. Meat. No, no. And for, first off, you don't have to say sandwich after panini. It's redundant. Okay. You know. And, and second, I really need to help this customer in line. If you don't mind, okay? I'm just gonna... hey, look, look at that guy's jeans. Hey, hey, nice jeans. Thanks. What they cost you? One fifty, I guess. A dollar fifty? No, a hundred and fifty dollars. A hundred and fifty dollars? Yeah. You go down to Ralph's, you get a pair of those for fifty cents. Ralph's, Ralph sells jeans. They do. It's fifty cents. No, they don't. They don't have. They don't sell. Don't. They don't have jeans at Ralph's. Stop it. Okay, ma'am, you're being very disruptive. If you want all these things, why don't you just go down to Ralph's and these, buy them? These things. I don't want these, I don't want any of these things! What the hell do you want? Attention! <laughs>
Hi, honey. Hi, babe. Hey, sweetie. Hi. Mm, you smell good. Oh, thank you. How was work? Oh, it was great. Yeah? Yep. So what are you cooking for dinner? Oh, meatloaf, but we're running out of ketchup. Ooh. I think there's enough. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Boy. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Please don't do that. Do what? It's funny. It's not funny. It's crass. <laughs> well, it killed at the plant. <laughs> well, we're not at the plant, okay? So please don't. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's funny. No, it's not. Well, why not? Because I shit my pants. Excuse you! <laughs> oh. Introducing Dunkin' Donuts' new iced coffee. this. That was awesome. Are you drinking coffee when it's this hot? It's iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. I know what you're thinking. Why doesn't the ice melt when the sun just liquefied my wrench? And now what am I thinking? Why did you just throw my wrench into the sun? I'm sorry about that, but I was trying to make a point. Don't worry about it. It was awesome. I don't even know why I brought it. You don't need a wrench to tar a roof. Where did you even get that coffee? There's not a Dunkin' Donuts for miles. Right over there. You know, maybe you should drink some water instead of the coffee, because you might be dehydrated. I think you're starting to hallucinate. I'm good. No, I don't think so. Remember how I just threw your wrench into the sun? Yeah, I'm not Thor. How tall do you think this building is? Like 800 stories? If it's not the coffee with the sugar, caffeine, trans fat, plus the dairy that is probably coagulated, then it's got to be the lack of oxygen that's getting to you. Mm. Go to the Oasis and get me another iced coffee. And I'll throw it into the sun and kill it. Dunk in the sun. Kin the sun. Kill the sun. Dunkin' Donuts. Kill the sun. From the Acme News World Headquarters in Hollywood, this is the Acme Saturday Night News with Dan Kane. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Acme Saturday Night News, the world's least trusted news source. I'm Dan Kane. Our top story tonight. As you all know, today, November 5th, was Move Your Money or Dump Your Bank Day, when everyone was encouraged to take their money out of the big national banks in protest of atrocities like bank fees. 
Well, as the day comes to an end, we here at Acme know two things. One, tens of millions of you took all of your money out of the bank today because obviously it's a solid and reasonable idea. We all did here. And two, tens of millions of you are now sitting there surrounded by all your cash, intently watching the Acme News for advice on what to do with your money. Well, we can help. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Acme Comedy Bank. Really? That's the, that's the theme song for the, for the bank? Uh, Jonathan, don't we have anything a little more, you know, something that inspires more trust? Yes, yes, that's it. Thank you, Jonathan and Christian. So the Acme Bank has a cool theme song, and the rest of the details will work out tomorrow. But rest assured, your money will be hilariously safe with us. Like gold, comedy is always a reliable investment, and of course, you'll be laughing all the way to the bank. By the way, check on your seats in the studio audience here. You've got deposit slips, except for those that you've got comp tickets, because you cheap asses have no money, of course. <laughs> the country of Greece is still struggling with its financial and political crisis, and now their prime minister has announced he may try to form a new government. He's been very secretive about who might uh, emerge as the leader of this new regime, but Acme News has been able to obtain an advanced copy of this campaign poster. <laughs> a new study shows that with unemployment still high and the economy suffering, more young adults are moving back home to live with their parents. Most parents say they don't mind too much, but they wish their kids would stop calling it Occupy Easy Street. <laughs> After publicly worrying about how she would support her family when her reality show was canceled, Kate Gosselin has landed a new job off screen as a writer for couponcabin.com, where she will be gathering and uh, writing, blogging about gathering and using coupons. Riveting. <laughs> Gosselin says while some of her commentary will be about shopping for her family of nine, most of it will be about getting coupons for birth control and antidepressants. <laughs> CBS 60 Minutes commentator Andy Rooney has died at the age of 92, just about a month after delivering his last commentary. His family says he will donate his organs to science and his eyebrows to Martin Scorsese. <laughs> Scorsese says he will be glad to finally have a set that matches his hair. <laughs> oh, the eyebrow jokes are always so easy. A young woman is claiming Justin Bieber is the father of her baby. However, Bieber denies it, but photos of the baby are raising questions. <laughs> You've heard by now that Kim Kardashian is ending her short-lived marriage, and Acme News has exclusive new information about why. Our sources tell us that Kim has been in a long-running love affair with this individual. The two reportedly met at a Hollywood event years ago and have been inseparable since. <laughs> Kim's lover says his work has been affected by the relationship because thinking of her makes it hard to focus. <laughs> uh, always hoping to turn laughter into a groan. <laughs> Lady Gaga will be spending Thanksgiving with ABC's Katie Couric for a 90-minute TV special called A Very Gaga Thanksgiving. <laughs> Lady Gaga will perform several songs and do an interview all while wearing a traditional Thanksgiving meal of turkey meat dress and cranberry accessories. Mm -hmm. In tech news, the Apple iPhone 4S has been wildly popular, selling fast and captivating users with its new voice-activated personal assistant, Siri. But last Thursday, Siri apparently took the day off. The personal assistant service was offline for several hours, leaving many users virtually stranded without their lifeline. One user complained, I had to actually use the touch screen and go into an app to find the nearest Jamba Juice. <laughs> God, can you imagine? Apple released a statement apologizing to its customers, saying, we sincerely regret turning millions of adults into helpless toddlers unable to manage their own lives. <laughs> Apple also said it will start claiming iPhone users as dependents on its tax return. <laughs> And finally, tonight, it is time to turn off daylight savings time and fall back to standard time. 
Now you'll be hearing lots of other news outlets reminding you to turn back your clocks to gain back one hour. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You can turn them back more than one hour and gain more time than everyone else. <laughs> yes, absolutely. While the rest of those idiots pick up only one hour, you can snag six, 12, or even 24 hours a whole day. I've been doing it for years. I'm 68 years old. <laughs> now this really works. I've had it verified by the Space Time Continuing Club at the Santa Monica Community College. <laughs> but a word of warning, don't get carried away. Last year I got greedy and set my clocks back 36 hours and ended up in some kind of loop where I kept repeating the moment where I was setting my clocks back, which went on for a day or two until I figured I was trying to take too much time. So go home tonight, set your clocks way back and then sit back and enjoy an extra day off while the rest of those fools go to work on Monday. <laughs> and don't write us if you lose your job. That's it for this edition of the Acme News. I'm still Dan King. not to say something sexual. Let's meet our contestant today, Phil Johnson from Sandusky, Ohio. Hi, Phil. Welcome to the show. Great to be here, Phil. As you know, the rules are simple. All you have to do is have a one-minute conversation with a woman without saying something sexual. If you do that, you win $25,000. Sounds easy enough. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. All right, let's meet the woman you'll be talking to, Tiffany Anderson. Here she is. So Tiffany, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Tiffany Anderson. Tits. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for the fantastic Young Romans. <laughs> Just it's a 
and gentlemen, the Young Romans. And now, Jake West, Master of the Recovery. Honey, we need to talk. A uh, couple weeks ago, you did something. Oh, oh my god. I'm so sorry. I was drunk. It meant nothing. I was going to say, a couple weeks ago, you got me pregnant. I, I know! That's what I meant. When I got you pregnant, it meant nothing. Because I don't love you, and I regret marrying you? Phew! That was a close one. I dug it out of the closet the other day. It's just a photo album from when I was a kid. Aww. Oh my god, you're so cute. Look at you. Was that your dog? Chubbs? Let me see. Oh my god, yes! Aww. Chubbs! Oh god, I haven't thought about Chubbs forever. Was he your favorite pet? Chubbs was awesome. <laughs> we did everything together right up until... Oh, did something really bad happen to him? We used to have one of those uh, big satellite dishes. Mm -hmm. Remember those before they invented the smaller, safer ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, it uh, fell on him. Oh. And he. Uh, uh, honey, I didn't. I didn't mean to stir up bad memories. I'm sorry. who are sensitive? No, not like that. Mm -mm. <laughs> Didn't you have a pet that you cared about? Yeah. I mean, what was that, that cat you always used to talk about? Uh, m m uh, Mr. Frisky or something? Mr. Whiskers. Mr. Whiskers, yes. Doesn't that make you sad thinking about him? Those cute little paws and little yeah. face. <laughs>
possible theme? Yeah, I, I thought we were crying theme song. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. That, that, was, that was really weird. We should break up. We should break up. <laughs> <laughs> excited every time I walk through this door. <laughs> You're gonna love this place. They make the best cakes in the city. All right, all right. <laughs> Tom! Hey! hey. <laughs> Welcome back, man. Thanks, man. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, this is my friend, Ben. Oh, hey, Ben. Uh, nice, nice to meet you. you. How are you doing? Welcome to KKK. <laughs> on Tuesday, uh, so I told him I'd bring him to my favorite cake guy. Great. All right. What's the occasion? <laughs> oh, well, it's uh, my uh, wedding anniversary, and my wife really likes chocolate cakes, so... Mm, chocolate. Yeah, we don't serve those kinds here. What? You don't... <laughs> you don't serve, you know, those kinds. Chocolate cake. You don't... at a cake store. Ben, Cake 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 is a specialty bakery. <laughs> place called Cake 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 doesn't sell chocolate cake, don't you? All right, look, see the, the Cake 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 believes a superior cake is the all-natural white. Okay, <laughs> see, look, he, it just, and you just said the Cake Cake Cake. What? What's your point, Ben? Well, it sounds you know, pretty damn racist. <laughs> what? It's not racist. Why do you think it's racist? Why would you think it's racist? I come here all the time. <laughs> In fact, I think they're getting a little sick of me. <laughs> Trust me, we've wanted to call the cops on you for a long time. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's win you over with a free sample, huh? All right. There we go. I got some right. Oh, there you go. Swat. Try that on for size. Looks good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is really good. Mm -hmm. Join the club. You see, White, white cake is a lot richer than dark. Yeah. You're, talking, you're still talking about cake, right? You're, oh, God, this is so good. But I need to wash it down with some water. Sure, sure, sure. No, you can't use that one. What? See? No. See? You're segregating water coolers. No, no that one's broken. You have to use the one in the back. Oh, man, you got to relax. I brought you here as my friend. Frankly, you're making me look bad. All right, look, we don't like to do it, but sometimes we make, you know, special occasions, you know, for cakes. But since you're Tom's friend, we'll make an exception. I'll throw some chocolate in for you. I appreciate it. Yeah. But not a lot. You don't want to bring the value down. Oh, no. no. <laughs> of course, of course. And, you know, it'll be the bottom layer, what? for sure. Because it goes dark, yellow, and then on top of that, of course, you know, the white, you know, and, and like lots of layers of white, because you don't want the other flavors to overpower you. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be a pretty tall cake. Oh, uh, we've made some high ones. <laughs> we've made some real high cakes. This high? Oh, like, uh, this high. Wow, that sounds great. Yeah, like, yeah. It's a racist! It's what? a racist! This is a racist! Cake, cake, cake! And you're, with the hands, you're racist! Bakery, racist! What? <laughs> racist! <laughs> what? Ben, that's a horrible thing to say. Terrible. Cake, cake, cake is 
not racist. I come here all the time. They love me. Yeah. Am I the only one who hears KKK when you say KKK? It's... Look, I have no hate in my heart, all right? I consider this man a dear friend of mine. I would never do anything to hurt him or offend him. But... I appreciate that, Nick, and I'm proud to be your customer. Uh, and as my number one customer, don't think I forgot your birthday, buddy. Oh, uh, you remember. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Birthday. You know what, I'm... I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. It's, you know, you're not a racist bakery. It's just, I don't know, there was a lot of things, and it just seemed like, you know, it was an odd coincidence. Bring in the cake! Beautiful cake. It's been hours making it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on! What the? It's tea for Tom, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I've had a great time. I hope you did too. Good night, everybody.